All right. Well, hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. I was just noticing Dave oh, and I. Oh, goodness. We, we did dressed, it again. Like we did it again. I actually have that exact same jacket. And yeah. I, at first, I thought I had it on. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man. Um, we, this is what happens when you shop at Walmart. <laughs> you know, it exactly. Really is That's why we have the same wardrobe. Um, the George brand of clothing. Yes. I find yes. that I've liked at Walmart. They're yeah. not our sponsor tonight, but maybe no. they will be one night. <laughs> they almost have to be at this point. Oh, time. my goodness. The vest last week was that the George. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty mine, sure I know mine was. So, Jack, the same thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, yeah, big fan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our, ridiculous. Ridiculous. Our, our actual sponsor for oh, yeah, tonight. Yeah. yeah um, Pringles. Pringles has been a sponsor before. Yeah. I actually pronounced it Pringle, and I got in trouble for that. So Pringles. Really? Yes. Somebody yes. else. Uh, uh, Scorchin. I believe this is a new line. Scorchin. And uh, I have the Cheddar Scorchin, and uh, I, I kind of like them. You know, let me try them. Mm-hmm. So if we, by some miracle, very many people ever actually start watching these, we'll probably have to... Stop doing our fake. I think, yeah, I think there might be a few. If, if, I think we're pretty safe. For if they take <laughs> off, if the videos take off, then yeah, there might be one or two cease and desists in the pipelines. <laughs> that would be a great day if we got that. If we got that. I think I've Honestly, that, that would be fun, yeah. That would mm-hmm. be fun. I mean, it's uh, not like we're going to fight it. We'll cease and desist. Oh, absolutely. Still, yeah. <laughs> if George Brand comes after us. <laughs> it's, it's over. I'll tell him for one free shirt, I'll cease and desist. <laughs> <laughs> but Scorching is not accurate. They're not that hot. They're not that hot, no. No. I, it is kind of cumulative. Like, after you have, like, about eight or ten of them, then it does start okay. to burn a little bit. But There you go. All right, this is, uh, we, we've dubbed this season two. So this would be season two, episode two. Episode two. I did um, look it up. We did a total of twenty-two episodes in season one. So this would be twenty-four overall. Oh, nice! But season two, episode. Two. So the the standard we've said is twenty-two episodes in a season. Huh? We'll see if we. That seems to be the standard. Which we'll see if we keep that. A lot of TV out. shows do that. You know, twenty-two episodes that in many? a season. Yeah. Really? Huh. Okay. okay. All right. So we're gonna follow. I think our standard ish format. We have got to start with first. We've done our sponsor. Yes. Well, we wasted a little bit of time at the start. Which that's, 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 that's typical. Yeah. Um, we've course. done our sponsor, um, Scorching Hot Pringles, with an S. Yes. Um, we've got uh, an off-the-wall, goofy question okay. um, that I'm about to ask that Dave has not heard yet. Yeah. Totally and I haven't, I haven't made my mind up about it yet either, actually. Um, we will have our serious question, another good question, lots mm-hmm. of good questions. Um, Dave, it's not a it's not a nerdy question, but it's a kind of nerdy topic. Topic, yes. Dave's going to enlighten us, and I've got maybe just a couple of dad jokes. Dad jokes okay. So pretty typical. So let's get our our goofy off the wall question first. Okay. okay, Dave. Yeah, I dropped it. <laughs> when you get older, you start groaning and making noises. I, f- I find that just trying to get out of abnormally <sighs> short vehicles makes me uh, groan a little yep. bit. So. Okay, Dave, if you had to lose two extremities, which would you choose? <laughs> okay. So you have to. Two, two extremities. Okay. So I assume... Uh, yeah. Don't assume. <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> well, <laughs> this was thought up two minutes before we started this video. Okay. If I had to lose two <clears throat> extremities. You know, I... I want to hear what you go for, because I really don't know. Yeah. yeah. Ears aren't really extremities; they're more well, of appendages, right? Or, I think so. Yeah, I, I had that same question. <laughs> I think so. Okay, I think I don't care. I, I think I don't care which arm and which leg, as long as they're opposites. Okay, but only one of each. That's. I mean, I think if if you're saying extremities are only arms and legs. I think you got to go for one of each, right? Yeah. You well, don't have to. I mean, you don't have to. I don't. I, I could probably get by losing both legs probably a little bit easier than I could both arms. Yeah, probably I, so. I think, I think so. Probably so. I think I would still go one and one. This yeah. is super offensive for anybody if you've lost a limb. I don't mean it. <laughs> really to be, kind of is I don't, if you're an amputee. I don't mean it, and it, that's not my intention. <laughs> um, I will say, this is a total side story as well, but it, I thought, thought of this. There is a guy who, who drives to the wellness center at SBU, 
and I saw him. I've seen him there a few times, and he doesn't have any arms, but he he's got this the situation fixed where he can drive his van. Yeah, and I almost died when I saw his license plate. This is not a joke. This is this is reality. Okay, okay, like not. I didn't make this up. His license plate says unarmed. <laughs> that's the that's the personal license plate that he got. He chose. I was like, that is chose, amazing. Yes, he chose the license plate. He unarmed. chose the license plate. And I was like, man, wow. He's just. He's just staring into the skin on that. Oh, I mean, man. Just... This has gone off the rails. I almost said he he just embraced it, but I didn't. <laughs> it's you may have to cut some of this. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> this would be this would be honestly a good slash offensive time to like just overlay the song uh, by Creed with arms wow. wide yeah. open. That's yeah. Yeah. an old yeah. classic. So anyway, good. sorry if you've lost in a limb. I don't. We don't. That would just be terrible. Yeah, don't want to make light of that, no. but at the same time, just a goofy off the wall question. question. Yeah. So I think we both decided one of each. One of each. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. Decide for yourself. Yeah. Okay. Serious question. <laughs> How do you pivot to a serious question <laughs> after that? After that rid- ridiculousness. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. This may be the last one we get to do, Dave. I don't know. Uh, it is a good question. It, it. We were talking before. A lot of these questions that when we read them, we have like this initial response where it's like, oh, yes or no. You know, but then you think through and you're like, oh, there's more to that than what yeah. I maybe kind of thought. So, good question. So, here it is. Try to refocus, people. We've got you off track. Um, so, try to focus. The Bible talks about the condition of the world in the end times as being wicked and evil. Is it wrong to pray for things to get better when it seems that goes against what God says is going to happen? Okay. Normally, I would fling this at the camera, but I may need to refer back to it. <laughs> I'll start with the first part. The Bible talks about the condition of the world in the end times as being wicked and evil. I think that I would agree with that. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's necessarily like controversial. I think that's probably pretty accurate. So I yeah. mean, we can kind of skip by that, I guess. But um, I think if you read the Bible, there's plenty of evidence that Excuse me. The scorching Pringles is fighting back in there. There's plenty of evidence that the that that the world is going to be pretty wicked and evil. We were talking with somebody yesterday about how things that are wrong will seem right, and and so um, I think that's a, that's I would agree with that. The question then is: It wrong to pray for things to get better when it seems that goes against what God says is going to happen? What do you think, Dave? What are your thoughts on this? So, my my initial um, my initial uh, the the simple simple answer, which comes accompanied by a giant asterisk, sure. is uh, no. It's it's not ever wrong to let God know the desires of your heart. No. It would be my my opinion. It's it's never wrong to to want that. At the same time. We should be desiring and striving to ensure that our the heart of our prayers align with His will and with His heart. Yeah, yep. And so it it seems kind of paradoxical to be like, oh well, I don't I don't want this, but at the same time, it seems clear that that's God's will. And the the thing I usually point to is Jesus in like. You know, before he's getting ready to be crucified, what is he? Two of my points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's one. You know, he's like, if if this cup can pass from me, right? Please let it, but not my will, your will, yeah. right? And so yeah. I, I think that that's so so. No, I, it's it's not wrong to pray for things to get better, even if we know that they aren't going to. We can certainly pray for temporary things, certain specific things to get better, especially if it involves a fellow Christian or even um, someone who's not a Christian, that they would come to salvation through some of this hard yeah. hard stuff. Yeah, and I meant to give this caveat at first. Um, as if you couldn't tell, it's not like we spend hours upon hours. He did, he did read like two books before the last video, yeah. but... Um, <laughs> So we are we are perfectly glad to be called out on something. If we if you think we're mistaken, um, yeah. there's a chance we could be. We're just kind of we're just kind of talking here and think in some very ways, large chance, very large, <laughs> between the two of us. Um, 
Uh, some of this is, I mean, we didn't talk beforehand about this, and like I said, we already have two of the same points, but um, so feel free if we we're, were, I think, humble enough to say, man, we could be wrong about something. But mm-hmm. I, I agree with those two things. Um, I, I, I thought of the example of Jesus in the garden as well. It's not like he didn't know something bad was coming. Kind of yeah. like the end times, we would know something bad is coming, and he still prayed about it. He still prayed and said, if there's kind of another way, mm-hmm. um, let that happen. But to Dave's first point, I think, about the heart, G- the heart of Jesus was obviously perfect, and his heart was to for the will of God to be done. And so I had that as well. I said, it's good to check in on your heart um, and while you're praying, what and why you're praying about the like if you're if you're praying for the for life to be easier or think for things to be, um, you know, in this in this case less wicked. I don't think that's a bad prayer, mm-hmm. um, but it is good to know why you're doing that. Are you praying just because you want to be comfortable? Um, I I find I think you know as as an older guy and a guy with kids and. I think about the world and the future coming at, at them more, and um, I, I don't want them to suffer, but I also know that there's a lot of growth and learning and spiritual growth and, and maturity and being like Christ and suffering like Christ, and so it's, it's, it's not that I don't pray for my kids to be comfortable. Um, I, I, still, I still do, but I think I, I understand or at least hope I understand that that's not even always best for them mm. is to be comfortable. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I agree with those two things. You can look at the example of Jesus, check in on your heart, see why are you praying that way. Um, and I'll add another couple of things and then you can maybe, mm-hmm. you can add a, a few things. But I like Romans 8. It, it helps me sometimes with prayer. Um, Romans eight twenty six says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. And so that's kind of making it clear, like, we don't even know what to pray (laughs) sometimes, and so... I, I'm glad that the Spirit intercedes for, for me um, because I don't know what to pray. And, and, and even if I am praying something, it may be the wrong thing. Um, but I think, again, it matters what your heart intention is. Um, and this is saying, you know, the Spirit kind of intercedes for us. Mm-hmm. I just imagine him being like, he's praying for that, but he doesn't really know anything as we know <laughs> so here's here's kind of like what what the prayer should be you know, you know? I, I hope so at least I hope that's... actually i think uh, so a good example um troy and anna have a uh a couple kids and, and one of them is quite a bit younger but not able to fully articulate everything he wants and so he'll say something that a Troy and Anna have to be like he means here's what he's saying yeah, yeah. here's what he's saying yeah. and I think that's probably one that's probably one of the best examples for that whole spirit interceding for things too deep you know like yeah I mean he knows what he wants and he's she's communicating it in his best little immature words that he possibly can and that's yeah. like us compared to the God of the universe and the spirit is interceding going yeah okay here's Here's what he means with his little bird brain. Okay, here's yeah. what he's asking for. It's probably a stretch with the bird brain. <laughs> I, mean, not, I mean, not that good compared yeah. to compared to God, right, right. You know, um, so uh, that's a few things that I thought of. I've got one more thought. Maybe um, the fact is, as much as we want to think we know when the end times are, yeah, or as much as we want to think that we're in them, and I'm not even saying we're not. I get that there are are clues and things sure. that match up with what the Bible says, but the fact is we have no clue when God's coming back. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure people thought World War Two, and yeah. the Nazis are running around. They probably thought, yeah. oh, we're about done here, and and things then got better in some ways, mm-hmm. right? When <laughs> they're yeah. defeated, and so I th- I think again that makes it's okay to pray for what's on your heart as long as you're looking at your motivation and you're praying for the will of God. I don't think there's anything wrong. Because we may not be, I mean, we may be so far away from the end times right now, it doesn't seem like it, you know, but yeah. We well, don't you know, you that. look at uh, like uh, Paul and Peter in the Bible, were pretty clear that they thought they were 
in the end times that uh, yeah. you know all the things they were going through under Roman oppression meant that uh, you know they were they were in the end times. So it's I, you know <laughs> sometimes I, I hear people saying oh well we're in the end times and and the thought that just it pops into my head is you know the more people who think we are in the end times just makes it less likely in my brain that we are in the end times. It's like it's, yeah. the more convinced people are because, you know, Bible makes it pretty clear that nobody knows yeah. what it's going to be. So the more convinced that people are, the more it's like, hmm, maybe not. Maybe, maybe we should maybe we should continue and, to be striving to make it a better, yeah, you know. Yeah, and it's it reminds me of, and this is a, maybe a stretch and I'm running off on a trail here, but, you know, <clears throat> If you're like you get frustrated with the country, or you get frustrated mm. with the president, and it's kind of like, well, what can we do? What can we do? And and I think sometimes it's a distraction, yeah, um, and and distracts us away from well, what can I do mm. for myself, for my own heart, and the people who are right with me, <laughs> yeah. the people who I I actually interact with day day by day. I'm not yeah. saying anything against voting or being involved. Don't hear that, um, but don't do those things. And be wrapped up like in politics at the neglect of your own like spiritual holiness, yeah, you know, and your own walk. Um, and yeah. so it's kind of the same, same in some ways for the end times. Don't get so wrapped up in trying to figure that out or being focused on that. Like what you can do is really try to be more like Jesus and try yeah. to lead people around you to Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, and I think I've expressed that before on on another episode. Is that sometimes you hear people talking about, oh, it looks like the end times. And they say it with a tone like that's an excuse not to try to bring more people to Christ. Yeah. Like even if they would never admit that, they, they just have like this whole tone, demeanor, like just about everything about their life suggests that, oh, I believe it's the end time, so I'm going to focus on me and mine. Yeah. You know? And that as Christians, that is completely contrary to what the Bible says we should be yeah. about. So. And so, yeah, kind of to bring it back to this question specifically, um, It's okay to pray for there to be Mm -hmm. less wickedness in the world and for things to get better. I I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't think you're like trying to fight against the will of God. Um, Now, if you're literally trying to fight against the will of God by praying that, then yeah, maybe there's a problem with your heart like we said before. But um, if you're praying it and and trusting God, um, I think think it's okay, you know, and... and, um, I don't know. I think those are my main points I was going to say yeah. about this. I, don't know I Well, the only other thing I had was just kind of a list of things. But, you know, in order to, I guess, hopefully, hopefully encourage this person to say, well, you can still be praying the will of God without necessarily be, you know, while at the same time praying that things would get better despite the fact that that might, you know, it, and this is from, of course, Got Questions. They, they should be a sponsor. Um, but a list, a list of different things that just helps to ensure that you are praying in accordance with the will of God. Um, one is pray for things that the Bible commands you to pray for, right? Seems like a pretty good, pretty good one. Like we're told to pray for our enemies, um, to pray for God to send missionaries to places, um, pray that we don't enter into temptation, ministers uh, of the world, ex- you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, number two, follow the example of godly characters in Scripture, right? We, we see, I mean, Psalms is full of prayers uh, by David, right? And there's other, other places in the Bible where we see prayers um, being uttered. I think we, we previously talked about one by... I'm forgetting his name. The pillar of fire. Oh, which prophet? Uh, oh, Elijah. 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 Yeah, <laughs> Elijah. I was, how thinking, he prayed. I was yeah. thinking pillar of salt. When you oh, said that was that. Lot. Yeah, yeah well, Lot's like, wife. Yeah, uh, Lot. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and he prayed. His prayer clearly says, you know, not that I would be glorified, but that you would be glorified, right? So, so that's a good one to line up with. Um, Three, pray with the might, right motivation, like you talked about. James 4 3 says, You ask and you do not receive because you pray or because you ask wrongly in order that you spend it on your own pleasures. So selfish, check your selfish yeah, prayers. Check, yeah. check your motivations. Um, four, pray with the spirit of forgiveness towards others, which we talked a little bit about forgiveness last week. Yep. Um, pray with thanksgiving. Pray with persistence. Right, uh, Thessalonians five seventeen. Pray without ceasing. 
uh, and seven, rely on the Spirit of God in prayer. And that goes back to what you were talking about from Romans 8, um, 26, where the mm-hmm. Spirit intercedes with us, groanings that our heart can't communicate, right? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if, I mean if, if you're praying for things that seem to be, you know, seem, seem to be, I don't want to say contrary, but just if you're asking yourself, well, is it okay to pray this? But at the same time, like your motives are lining up there. Like you're, you're genuinely wanting God to be glorified and, you know, your, your motives are not selfish if mm-hmm. they're, if they're for the benefit of others. Then and it's I, kind of just rely it's on kind the of, spirit. Yeah. It's you kind of just I mean? rely on the spirit to know yeah. that, uh, yeah, that, that the message is getting, is getting to the father appropriately. Yeah, so I'm sure there's lots more to say, but that's probably enough from us yeah. about this for now. And <laughs> you can correct us in the comments correct us or, or us, more questions about prayer. Tell us what we missed yeah. or um, that kind of stuff. So, would you like to do your? Uh, Absolutely, got it on the board. Even got it on the board. Even yeah, we plan yeah, to we plan to add some books behind us and make it look like we read a lot. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll like we got said little, last time, we got these little bookshelves. We're going to prop them up a little bit. Like so we said last yeah. time, maybe make us look a little smarter. But yeah, it's pretty empty right now. <laughs> much reflective much like, of our yeah, brains. I was going to say exactly where I was. Okay, <laughs> anyway, anyway for us? so um, this one I thought was was a whole lot of fun for any of you video gamers out there. Um, the United States Navy mm-hmm. uses Xbox controllers for their periscopes. Really? Yes. Like literal, like Xbox literal controllers. Xbox controllers, like something Not... you can buy from Walmart. A <laughs> literal Xbox go. controller for their periscopes on uh, submarines, like nuclear-powered submarines, like those big things you see on uh, wow. fun, fun movies. The first one, as a matter of fact, uh, was introduced in 2018. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, the first U.S. submarine was equipped with an Xbox 360 controller mm-hmm. when the submarine was brought into commission. So right off the bat, it's not like this was a started with fix. It. it started with an Xbox controller. And the main reason, there's two main reasons for that. The first one being that the, um, the previous design for the Periscope controllers... Um, <laughs> Cost? You want to you want to throw out an estimate on how much it costs? The previous for just, design for the for the periscope, for just the periscope just, just the controller. controller, just the controller. Um, Seven thousand five hundred and forty three dollars. That's a good one, but you are off by roughly thirty one thousand dollars. Oh my goodness! It costs thirty eight thousand dollars for the previous wow. for the previous hand grip assembly used to control the periscope. Somebody just ripped the <laughs> you ripped off. the navy off. Versus thirty dollars <laughs> for a Xbox for an Xbox controller, wow. and the second reason is that most people entering the Navy nowadays are already familiar with an Xbox they controller. They understand how it they works. understand how it works. No learning curve in uh, in a new a new system. There you so go. since two thousand eighteen, new submarines built by the U.S. Navy are equipped with Xbox, Xbox controllers. controllers. There you go. Thanks for that wonderful information, You're welcome. Dave. Um, I have two. Not great dad jokes, okay? okay. It's um, the mark of a good dad joke. mark of a good dad joke. Okay, here's the first one. So I was in my room, and I saw a group of ten ants just running frantically. Mm. I felt bad, so I made a small house for them out of a cardboard box. This tec- technically makes me their landlord, and they are my ten ants. <laughs> Do you get it? Yeah, I get it. Do you it. get it, Dave? I get it. That's <laughs> ten ants. That's, ten ants. That's a long walk for a short <laughs> drink of water. It is. I wasn't sure. I had tried to get the pronunciation of normally you would say yeah. tenants, right? That's yeah. not clear enough. But it's sure. tenants. Okay. <laughs> and finally, huh, my wife sighed. Why does everything uh, with you have to be a game? I said, an excellent question, sweetheart. But next time, please use the buzzer. <laughs> Oh boy! Extra bad tonight, everybody. Yeah. Extra bad. So, all right. Well, I think that's it. I feel like this was maybe a bit shorter than our yeah, typical. Could have been. Could that's have been a bit short. That's nobody's, probably okay. I don't think anybody. Complaining. Yeah, nobody's complaining nobody's about it. A little bit short. Bad, so, all right. But, well, uh, we'll be looking for. I guess it'll be episode three. Yeah, be looking forward to episode three next week. We have no idea what we're going to answer. Really, no. we've got um, we've got two. I think. Maybe at least two, questions. maybe at least two maybe questions more. in the wings. Uh, as always, feel free to send in more questions. Yep. And uh, you can watch our five minute or less one. Clicking in front of Kevin here, 
You watch uh, other episodes from our channel, clicking right in front of me here, or you can subscribe, little orb right up here. So, but there you we'll, go. Otherwise, I can't wait to we'll see. see you. I yeah. can't wait to see you. The if it lines up properly, yeah. it probably won't because it's twenty <laughs> seconds or less. But that's okay. Yeah. That's all right. So. Anyway, all right. So, see you next time. See you next time.